calling all Muta Baruka fans, calling all Muta Baruka fans. Muta Baruka t-shirts. The Muta Baruka limited edition t-shirts are now back. Get your limited edition t-shirts at half price. These t-shirts come in white and grey, male and female, small, medium, large and extra large. The easiest way to get your limited edition Muta Baruka t-shirts if you come to 262 to 274 Campbell Road on the 7th of April featuring Umar Johnson, Muta Baruka, brother Edison Abanja and Leo Mahan. This is where you get your half price t-shirts at 10 pounds, no longer 20 pounds, 10 pounds. Buy your t-shirt on the day. Our YouTube Juke Base here once again just to remind you that Muta Baruka will be here in London on the 7th of April at uh, 262 to 274 Camberwell Road alongside Dr. Umar Johnson, Brother Edison Abanjay, and it'll be hosted by Leo Mohammed. For information, the hotline will be 07506 725 three four five i'm gonna say it once more again zero seven five zero six seven two five three four five or oh, that could be part of the solution that would have serious implications on the black community worldwide well first of all i don't think it's just black people actually black people you know some things are not happening in the world you know you know, I don't think it's black people that kill black people. You have white people that kill white people, white people that kill brown people, white people that kill black people. The problem is that black people never usually kill white people and black people never usually kill brown people. What is it is that you say we have breakdown of the family that is taking place right now amongst the black communities? From Jamaica to Johannesburg, from Johannesburg to England. There's a breakdown of the, 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 the relationship between parents and children and this is because of that you know the, the, the programming of the black consciousness the program in is that the nine to five job that is there you know does not allow for a communal living in the household so everyone is trying to do their own thing most times there's not a father there so the mother has to be the father the mother has to go outside and try to maintain the family the child is out there when they come in, they don't, they, they, they're not communicating. There's video games, there's this, this, this um, rectangular thing they call iPhone, laptop, all of these things. It's been part of the breaking down of the black family. So we need to really regenerate and reignite our consciousness. And how are we going to build back the family? The family structure is very important. And now what about these killings? People don't know so that them, them, them children is doing things on the road. In Jamaica, the, the, the girlfriend don't know what the boyfriend is doing. The, the, the boyfriend don't know what the girlfriend is doing outside. And the, the, the problem don't know what the children is doing when they leave the house. So we need some communication thing that's supposed to take place between family. In the family, just like how we knew it, we have an issue of communal living where the village takes care of the children. No one lives in no other village. You know, we have a star skyscraper with people who don't know each other in the same building, in the same lot. We need to reignite that family structure. That is really what we need to do. So how do we get back to that position? The position? Yeah, how do we get back to the, the family structure that you, you've just uh, alluded to? Well, the education, that we who know what's supposed to be done, do it. That's what we need to do. It's a lot of us who know what to be done. What to be done, we just do it. I don't know about any organization and structure. We are appealing to individual families in the community to just make sure, for instance, if your little girl child has a cell phone, that is so expensive that even you can't afford it. You have to question a child. <laughs> Where did you get that phone from? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 you can't afford to do that. And the money that I'm giving you is not enough to buy a phone like that. You have to know where the children is in the night and in the day. You can't just leave it up like the children go to school and that's it. In a Jamaica, we have a problem with that. Because you have parents who send their children to school and the school get close to the part of the mission yet and let them on their own. It, all we do it is to get the family, the parents, to be more active in the movement and the development of their children. That is all we do it. Educate them, 
Hello? Muta. Hello? Muta, I'll call you right back. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll call you back. Brothers and sisters, sorry, but the, the line dropped out. We don't know why. We're trying Muta again. Hello, Muta. Yes, hello? Yes, yeah, sorry, we, for whatever reason, the phone just dropped out. Well, yeah, it's happening. Keep happening, yes. Yeah, we're just talking about um, family. Yes, sir. And how we do it, how we do it is to get friends to be more happy. We who know, just like I'm saying it to you now, we need to do more of this. We need to use the earwaves. We, 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 we need to use the pop culture. We need to use ourselves. That is really how we do it. So, so you're saying we should take personal responsibility? Personal responsibility is all the it, it, best responsibility. We can't wait on government, we can't wait on the educational system. Because part of the problem is the educational system. Just like I'm talking to you now and a lot of people is listening, we need to, to reiterate it continuously. You know, when, when I'm on the radio, sometimes I keep saying the same thing. And people, people might be saying, I said that last week and I said that before, but really and truly, it's, the, it's like a song. You, you first hear a song and you say, Chuck, you like a song later. But you keep hearing that song, you keep hearing that music, and you start to, you start to cheat into your consciousness. And you start to say, wait. You know, so when you hear that song, the first, you never like it. But no, you like it. That is all a part of the propaganda machine. We keep reiterating the same thing. Somewhere along the line, it will seep into the consciousness. That's what advertisement does. Big corporations know the power of advertisement. That if they keep spending money to put a 10 second or a 20 second ad and continue going, 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 it will sell the product. What it seems like we are selling a product. The product of family, back to the family, structure, family. And that is really what we're saying now. Those of us who have the areas, those of us who can write in the communication level, those of us who have children in the communities, whether we are children, um, parent or guy, or psychologists, I think, that is what we need to know. So let me ask you a question then. What about the people who, who keep saying that be before we do anything, we must get unity first? The, the purple people who say what? Who are, who are always saying, before we can do anything, we need to get unified first. I mean unified. Nobody can unify your family if your family is, is, is down. Well, unify yourself. What you unify in a world? <laughs> That's what you unify a world. It starts with the family. There are people who listen to us now that don't know me. There are people who listen to you every day that maybe I've never seen you, but I'm either your vibes. That is, that is what you use. You're not talking about we need to be unified first. I don't know about unified first. It means that if 10 people can't come together, they can't do nothing. It starts with the individual. Man of God is a confidence himself. If you have no confidence in yourself, you're twice defeated in the rest of life. With confidence, you win even before you start. So, if you're going to wait on 100 people to come together to, to build up your family, you're in a serious problem. Because when, you, when the mother was having the child, there was that community there to, to, to give birth to that child. What you need is individuals Everything starts from the individual. Individuals make up community. Community make up nation. Nation make up the world. So we start with the individual now. People who listen to me now. People who listen to you every day. That is what we talk about. I talk about people who talk about we need unity. Unity, unity is what you do. When you personally take responsibility, that is what is the unity. In fact, it's, 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 it's making a... A dent and a mark. Let me see. I don't know about sitting down with 40 people for come tell me to families. That's why people live on government all the while. Government is not responsible for certain things because government is here to govern the country and make the big, big companies that make more money so as not to make you move. You, in a, your community, that is really what your effort is all about. So, um, Muta, I agree with you because um, it's a problem we've had in London for a long time. And I, I came up with a, a, a phrase called, rather than saying the word unity, using a, a commonality of purpose. 
Because I, I, want, I want to think that we have the same purpose, which is to make our families successful. Well, you know, it's good to call upon people to do this and do that, you know, to come together. That is good. But if you keep waiting on organization, look how we tell organizations come and all these things. If you sit down to call upon organizations to make a move, they will, it's not a word. We are talking about individuals. It's individuals make up organizations, you know. So if you still don't tell people to structure certain things, it can work that way. But if you don't move the people in who you have the capability to move, in we have radio programs, in we have writing, in we have going into communities and speaking as individuals. When I do my program, I do it as an individual doing something and it resonates out there. You know, it's so, so you're helping in that way. If you can get up 10 people, that's fine. Because there's no farm in that thing. It's not a, you know, you're not going to a party where you have an organized and structure. It's about you now development. And sometimes when you start to make change, but you are organized change. Sometimes change come to individuals. The greatest revolution start not because people sit down and structure a revolution. The revolution starts by continuous movement of a people who realize that enough is enough, so they have to do something about it. Well, I, I, I was saying to um, an, an audience recently that I don't know anywhere in history where the majority started a revolution. It was always one or two or three people. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's continuous. Sometimes it's continuous. Yes. So, here's my next question for you, because um, a lot of people are listening to the show and obviously want to hear what you have to say. Um, next question. Oh, wait, wait a second. Let me go back. One second. Okay, next question is, how would the, the solution be Oh, how would how would you come up with a solution to implement so that we can have maximum effect over this new idea? I don't, in fact, you didn't address the point I asked you relating to the uh, African countries signing the agreement. Climate agreement. Yeah, you, you, um, last week, 44 African nations signed an accord to come together to federal to formalize. A one market, one um, just like Europe, a one union Africa. Well, that's what Ghana that was trying to do before them killed him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what are you saying now? Let's sign. What, 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 what is the question about yeah. sign that? Sign? What 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 do we in in the in the, the diaspora need to do to help Africa the, the African nations that have signed this accord? What do, what do we need to do to help them to make it? A reality. We support them by saying do it. By keep supporting them by saying do it, do it. I mean we can't divert or we can um um decide the intentions of the leaders in Africa, but we can support them just like how we support the, the fight against apartheid. You know, Jamaica was one of those countries where the first country to win sanction against South Africa. You know, the reggae music was one of the things that not strengthen them. The, 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 the South African um, freedom fighters in that time. So in support, we only can lend our voices to these things that make them know that we are with them to do it. What about, you know, we, about that? What about our collective financial power? I don't know about our collective financial power. What I'm saying is that if Africans decide to do something and we say in the interest it can be done, you know, we just, all we have to do is give them all moral support and say, yeah, go on and do it. And I don't know about financial power. African people in this part of the world, we don't reach us out. We can't wait for Africans to come together to have financial power to make the Africans do what they need to do in Africa. If the Africans don't seem to do it now, all we have to do is just give them the support morally and just say, yes, do it. But according, according to statistics, African Americans have a GDP of $1.3 trillion a year. Yeah, so what that means? That means they're going to get up tomorrow and the, 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 the African men do what they need. Well, it, well, 
If we all that and say that we have enough money, but we're talking about something that you're talking about now. Uh -huh. that come together now in Africa and decide to go into this thing. We're going to sit down now and look on what American black people have to say, put that money they support them. Most of them not interested in that. We who's interested is we talking about in support now. When, when, when Jamaica did, 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 did rise up against South Africa and made a sanction, we was that big power. It was a little island who decided that this thing is wrong. Morally, it's like that we were, you know, we were trading, we trading with, 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 with white people, you know, the Americans and the British who supported their party system. But we are a little country say, we have to support that. We now have a trade with South Africa. You know, it, it, it make a difference. It cannot, uh, not, that's not the point. The point is that it is a little country who say, we now support that. And then other countries come and say, yes, we now support it. Either. And it keep a chain reaction. So, we are talking about where the black people in America have trillions of dollars now. What trillions of dollars not going to go? Not right now. I'm not going to just look at it and I say, why do have billions of dollars? What we're talking about is what the Africans are doing now and what we can do. Sometimes moral support is a great support. You know, when you put your spirit, when you see a man doing something and you're the father or whatever, you say, yes, go on, keep doing it. That's why people go to football match and cheer for them team. To give them team moral support. You know, not that you want to play football for the team too. It's just that now you sit down at the, 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 the bleachers and the grandstand and you, you make the loudest noise for your team and your team hear you. I say, yes, people out there support me and give them a push. Well, I, 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 like what you, I like what you're saying because I, I do believe in supporting wherever we can, whether it's on a moral, a moral level or a financial level or whatever level. Yeah, well, we don't have none of these. I don't know if it's still on the other side. Well, black people, um, it's billions of dollars in America. You know, what, what that going to know? Like, why don't we get up tomorrow morning and do it? No, we can't watch that. We, 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 we who is the one at the bottom can do something to make the top, make the difference in the top. So if there are African countries who decide to say yes, one money and this and this and that, like the euro, we just say yes, go on and do that because we need that. You know, we need transportation to link up with Africa. We just say yes, we can, we can, we can, you know, and, uh, support more and moral support for that. We don't have no money, no billions of dollars to give them to put that. You know, Jamaican, uh, you know, we don't have that. You know, England people, or, or, or we will organize that in the next five years. We can't organize that in the next five years. We can't even organize the abolition of slavery for 400 years. Because slavery still exists on black people, as you can't about the killing of black people among black people. So if we can't organize that, much less more for the Africans, all right. US people, black people have trillions of dollars. That, uh, that, that is not no significant to what's supposed to happen now. What's supposed to happen now is that we strengthen them with our support to do it and to do it because they are benefit me too. So, so mo mo moving forward, what do you think um, that we, because I don't know whether you've heard there's been a, a spite of murder, killings among young black people in England. London particularly. What, what what do you think we need to do to combat this issue? I just tell you already. I just tell you already. You know, the first question you ask me. Because I, we have a small problem in Jamaica. I, I'm repeating it. I'm repeating it because, as you rightly said, that repetition is the mother of learning. Yeah, well, we just have the family. We don't have the family structure. building about the family structure. It's not only Indian talk, you know, Virginia talk, you know, Jamaica. We have a serious problem, crime problem in America right now, Jamaica right now, that we have to grapple with. You know, see, some people are there, so now, them straight to go back to Jamaica, yet still, them can't take the stabbing, them are going, them just report the stabbing in a, the killing in a, 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 worse than in a New York City. You know, see, so when people are telling them, I come back to Jamaica because people are murdered, people are so, we come up here and hear about people, you come murder, you come here, so, so, it's, it's a thing. So we have to, that we have to really deal with the situation as it comes. We need a family structure, a return to the family structure. And the only way we can do that is if those who know that this is what is supposed to be done, 
Just do it. It's simple. Just do it. I, I like that. That's, that's my motto. Just do it. Yeah. Well, um, so tell me, what, what do you have in store for the folks and without giving away everything? What do you have for the folks um, when you'll be talking on your tour? Well, we were reading poetry and then we surround the poetry with our philosophy. So, you know, we have opinions and we have philosophical opinions. So it's about the poetry intertwining with the philosophical reasoning that we usually have. You know, it's like a live cutting edge. With poetry, you know what I mean? So, to those of us who, uh, to those of you who is in England, because we have more listeners in England than Jamaica, we know that as a fact, that there are more people listening to the continent than the stepping river in England. What you're going to say is more of a uh, live on stage, doing what you listen to early in the morning when you hear more of uh, in a Jamaica. That, that's really what it's all about. So there's a chance. It, the, 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 the place that is going to have is, is, is the lighthouse. I don't know the lighthouse, but I guess most people know the lighthouse. It's in Campbell Road. Campbell Road, yeah, Campbell Road. So it's tomorrow, 6 o'clock. We will be there with Umar and with Mr. Brother Edison and Leo Mohammed. We will be there. So we hope you will be there too, you know, because this is something that is unique for a lineup. This is not a a musical lineup, as you can see. This is a world sound and power lineup, and we must congratulate the sister for really thinking about something like this, because usually people know, people think that things can't work without music, you know, but there is, we need some interaction now that between the, the person on the stage and the person listening to the person on stage. You know, that's what we really need now. We need to go to the edutainment part of it. Where you can sit in the audience, you can maybe laugh, but you also think. You know, you can you can think and move your your mind because we've been moving our bodies for so long. You know, so we need now to move your mind now, and that is really what I see that this lineup is trying to do to move your mind, we put you in a different reference point, a different frame of of of, of thinking. You know, especially in this time when you just talk about the killing and the African situation and thing, you know. So we hope that the people that will turn out. Well, I, I am I am I'm very confident that you'll have a full house because it's 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 a, a recipe that we need. And and also I I, ex I agree that you must have full audience participation now. Yeah man, we need we need we need this more, we need more more structural promoters to do this. You know, because sometimes people, especially now with the kind of music that's coming out of Jamaica, where it's a body thing. Everybody is moving body. Every, every video, the music video now coming out of Jamaica, you see some woman, you know, with her back come up by the ear, half naked, like she's a go go club. And this is like a normal thing. I mean, we start to accept these things are a normal thing. So there's no mind-blowing situation. It's a body-blowing situation where everybody's into the body and not the mind. And really, you know, see, because uh, the greatest weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And right now, the mind of the oppressed gone way out there. So, you know, so we need to really turn over. We need to return to that origin and find ourselves. You know, if we don't do that now, we just go and go right and just go and wait till we close and and, and the falls here, Irish and Chinese, this and Chinese, that and, you know, let's go on then, you know? So how do you, how do you think that we could, we could um, stem this, this downward spiral towards destruction? What was that? The street, I got the same question, Bridget. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get deeper into it because... <laughs> It's family. It's family we are talking about, you know. So if you have to keep asking the same question, I don't understand why. Why? I mean, it's family we are talking about. The black family must develop that. You know, we must have a sense of family. Family structure. That is, it, it will end. It will, it will end. Yeah, because over here we don't have a family anymore. The family's been broken down in England because, as you know, back in the 1980s, the government took away the rights of, of, of parents to discipline their children. Where's the discipline?
children. No, no, nobody can take away your right to discipline your children. Then take away the right for the stop mutilate your children. <laughs> I feel like discipline them, tell them how to discipline your child. Then say you must mutilate me. It, 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 it comes to you, it's a and go and then pick me. It's a scientific truth. It, this, this argument, we buy the foolish, is both pure and spoiled child. It's joke business. When a, when a parent say a picnic, it's not a child feeling, the, feeling it, you know. It's the, it's the reason why only for mothers lick them picnic, you know. It's because of the mother, it's not because of the child. It's something you ignite in you that you need to control while you lick your picnic. So the government never tell you must don't, 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 um... Discipline. Don't discipline the child. They say you must abuse your child. And one of the abuse is to continue to lick the picnic in the head and anything will take up the thing after the picnic. And people say, but when we really are Jamaica, so we did grow up. It's big madness. When we really are Jamaica, and I tell you, grow up in the car, we live living in a Judeo Christian mindset. That say, uh, when you picnic do something, lick the picnic and the picnic one, it is foolishness, it's stupidness. And most sick children who grow up that way are still thinking that psychologically, them don't really identify what happened. But trust me, trust me, we need to stop me for picking them. We need to stop it. I because in that time, yeah, it's not like first time. It's like, oh, your grandmother used to eat certain carbohydrate food. And you don't need to eat so much carbohydrate food now because your grandmother and grandfather used to work and walk up and down. Nowadays, they're not working and walking up and down. Or maybe you're working, but they're not working up and down. So the carbohydrate don't get to work out of your body. So it develops all sorts of sugar in your body and you become diabetic and all these sickness. So what you need now, we can have a loop on where grandmother used to go to come do it back now to the young people. And because the young people, their mind and thinking is not the same thinking. See, so when you're, when you're in force a law now, by your picnic, we say, because your picnic don't hear where you're, you know, in the Bible, we say, if your picnic continue, to with the parents, they must be put to death. That is what the Bible says in a limited course. You must put a child to death if they continue to disobey their children, their, their parents. Who will not this? Sometimes you do that, and it, 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 this, this stinking in a door, that it almost can end up in a dead door. So you think so I don't think that the, the, the government say you must, must discipline your child. You never say that. The government say you must stop abuse your child by licking, licking the picnic because you get upset over something that the child do. And I agree with it. Well, I'm of the same opinion too because I, I, I have um, five children and I've, I've not ever used whips on them or, or belts. Well, look here. You see that Jamaica? I belt, you have a picture of viral and I got my arm. Much of child use a beat and pick me. I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, machete. A woman I use a machete and a beat her picnic. You think that is discipline? That's madness. That should never be happened. If, if, if the government come and say, no, 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 you can't say the, 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 the government that say you must discipline your picnic. That is ignorance if you say that. The government will never tell the body to must discipline your child. Everybody needs to be discipline. That's why they have jail. They have jail to discipline people who go outside of the law. And if you have some frame of reference in your house to the child, you must be used and must be used. You must be disciplined, taken, but the discipline cannot and should not continuously be the abuse of your child. Because we live in a different time, the child then grow up with that in a little consciousness. And you have Jamaican people that say, well, the child never done to me, you know. When my father used to take up all rock and take up all belt and take up anything that child and have free after me and all that really. That, 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 is, that, is, that, that is archaic, that is prehistoric thing. You have to come out of that. Well, I, I, I think that a lot of people who, dis, who abuse their children under the guise of discipline have never looked in the dictionary to find out what the word discipline actually means. Let me talk about psychiatry. <laughs> but, but the answer is in the dictionary. The what? The, the answer to the word discipline is in the dictionary. They should look it up and, and use the, the parts that are actually beneficial as opposed to the, the brutal expression of discipline. Look here, the reason why black people 
talk about discipline in that way is because of the Bible. We must not spare the rod and spoil the child. That is where it's coming from. You see? But that is where it's coming from. That means the kids must do some take some and lick them and let them rot it. Let them know for them not to do it again. <laughs> but that's really what I'm doing. That's what I'm saying. I am saying to you that it's junior Christian mindset is part of the degrading of the African mind, the African consciousness. We cannot use those terms of reference to deal with our situation in that time. I don't think that was written 3,000, 4,000 years ago. We live in a different dispensation around the 21st century where people are talking to you right now and them in a little rectangular square metal thing where you wonder how oh, they're reaching at the box. A little girl the day before yesterday in a Jamaica come to me and she about five years she said she listened to me all right and we get in a radio. <laughs> I also think that the, the, this idea of the beating is a carryover from slavery. Well, it's a carryover from all the things. It's a whole heap of things. Carryover from all the things, Bridget. You know, I see some people beat some picnic and use some words for them picnic. That, you know, I, I, I come up last year, I come up in an airplane with, that, with, with, with something. And in a month of the year, the little picnic are ball, ball, ball. And the woman, you see little picnic, and little picnic about three years old, you know. And because she embarrassed her, it's not because of the way the picnic is, you know, because if nobody is ever there, she would not go and say, you know. But she was so embarrassed that she keeps licking the picnic, shut your mouth. I mean, you lick the picnic and I tell them, shut your mouth. It's peeing them up here, you can't. <laughs> All right. So she <laughs> lick the picnic, boop, 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 and everybody will look on her, and she starts to feel weird, weird, weird. And so when she reach up and get to the airport, you know, and she have got through the airport, so you can pick the car to ball again. And she do your walk with the picnic. So me look at her and say, so oh, you know I lick the picnic now. You know what to me? I don't care I pick no picnic so I feel them picnic. <laughs> so you must know the mindset, you see. All the discipline say you know, that she knows that she lick the picnic up so she will not be in problem. You say she lick the picnic up so she will not be in no problem. So how come? She can't curve her. Anger in England, but when you have to because there is a different law that the law is enforced. She has to find another way to keep the picnic quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting because you, you, you know you you brought out something that is hidden here in in London because I, I've I've noticed that our people have. As you rightly said, two mindsets: one when they among ourselves, and another one when they are among white people. Look here, you have a man in Jamaica, I drive taxi, and he drive on the, the wrong side of the road, and I block up the traffic with a company up on the side of the road. He say, "I'll stop that and just fly cheap." Or when he reach up there, so he not do anything there. Or when he reach up there, he will be every stop light when he. And him, him, when he's up on the highway, he no not speed. Only think on that. Because God are watching. So we need some invisible force, which right now is the camera then, and some police are hiding behind some tree. So make we do the right thing. Yes, you say we enslave. If that enslave like that, if we, if we can only be a stop line, because we see if we stop like that camera and pick up and we're going to pay a hundred pound or two hundred pound. Hello? Oh, what the hell? Muta, I apologize. Um, for whatever reason, the phone cut off again. I'm calling you back. Hopefully, the call will go through. Brothers and sisters, call a family member, call a friend, let them know 
that Muta Baruka is on Conscious Radio, 102.0 FM. We were just talking and um, the phone system cut off, but we're trying to reach him, call him back. So, Muta, if you're listening, I'm trying to call you back. Hang tight. Sometimes it takes longer to get through than to a phone call than to get through a tunnel. What's, what's going on? Let me try again. Yeah, greetings, brothers and sisters. African Muhammad on Conscious Radio. Speaking with Muta Baruka. Um, trying to get his, his opinions on societal uh, problems that we co- encounter on a daily basis. Particularly bringing up our children and um, what is necessary in order to fashion them. Ooh, it's just not happening today at all. It's just not happening. Let me try again. Let me see what the deal is. I don't know what's going on with the, with the phone system. Yeah. Yeah, greetings, Muta. Sorry, but the phone system seems to be playing up this yeah. morning. Glad to have you yeah. back. M- Muta, I- I'm going to give you the microphone for you to um, put your philosophical ideas forward or your opinions. I'm going to give you the mic. I'm going to give you the microphone to say whatever you feel that you need to say to our audience listening to no, you. No, we told you what I said, you know. We told you what I said. We told you what I said. I mean, we told you what I said. So you, you nothing else to say? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of things you can't say. I said, we're not going to say to what we are saying. What we are saying, I mean, it's an interview. You know, we're not really uh, a dual lecture. What we are saying, what we are saying. Okay, can I ask another... An, yeah, an, 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 so can I ask another question? Hello? Yeah, I'm not here. Oh, can I ask you another question? Yeah, man. You mentioned earlier that there is a almost a similar situation down in Jamrock as we have in England here. Yeah. What is the government down there trying to do to um, as they as we're doing here in London to stem this whole idea of preventing fear of people going down to, to live in Jamaica again? What, what are they doing to stem the what? The fear of people who are up here want to go back. What are they doing to stem the fear? Well, uh, there's an emergency down there right now. You know, they have one. St. James was the biggest place where crime has gone. So far, we are the same thing down there. So, state of emergency is one of the things that we them use. Ironically, tourists don't come to Jamaica. I know. That's the weirdest thing, isn't it? No, you know what is the weirdest thing is that is the is the black people they move Jamaica and free to come along there. White people are free to come along there. That is the weirdest thing. But 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 you know what I believe it, the same thing happens here. You know, of all the knife crimes in England, you very rarely, if ever, hear of a white person being stabbed by a black person. Yeah. So you yeah, because in that black community, in that Jamaica, we don't kill white people. <laughs> and in England we don't kill them either. Yeah, we kill, we kill ourselves. So, the tourists, the more tourists come into Jamaica now than ever before. And they're in the areas where you never believe them. All the Japanese them. So, it's just Jamaicans that are here. I said, I mean, I got Jamaica, there's too much killing I go on down there. I mean, I ride in the backyard in England, I'm killing I go on up there too. So, you know, you never can know. So, how can you know, you we... Can, are you playing crash too? So, so, me, so me, how can we then give confidence to these people who, they want to go yeah. home. That's why you say, you can't get it, you know. You have to have confidence in yourself, man. <laughs> you can't go give your confidence. I don't talk about selling a shop or a supermarket. I mean, you're, you're right, but unfortunately... Jamaica, Jamaica. You say, you're going to come there, you're not come there. You can't see up there. And I'm fire going along the whole of your apartment, then. But you, you know, can't see the police shoot your picnic. And you will try to protect them and them shoot you too. You know, you can't come up, you can't up your hand out in a subway and, and, a, and a high field man tie a bomb by themselves and blow it up. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 what is what? What is what? Yeah, you're right. But unfortunately, you know, when, when I go to various places, I hear this continuous story of our people repeating the same tribe over and over and over about the fear of going back to live in Jamaica. Yes, they can't go out here. They're still proud. Why are still proud? 
Et ma belle là, la lèvre la gueule, ma roquette, qui t'aime, tu as ça, il est tout au They don't want, you know, you're not they're not going to do that either. Eh? You know they're not going to give nothing away. They, they I don't want to stay up here. They want to stay up here. I don't have no problem with them staying up here. No. Just like I don't have no problem with Jamaica and I live Jamaica. What I have said, if they want to stay up here, they know they're not going to go, go back to Jamaica. And they have land long the from them grandmother and grandparents. They know they're not going to go back. Just sign it over to me and I will know what to do with it. Because you have no people don't ever want somewhere to live. And then they find land where Queen own. So I will gladly distribute it properly and make sure say, the people them who are supposed to get it. Get it. You know, so I'm making this appeal. Anybody up here who have from the land who want to give away. Because they're not going back to Jamaica. You can contact me tomorrow. Muta, what a great idea. I love that. <laughs> I love what you're saying because we actually do. Seriously, we actually do need someone like you down there who can do what you're saying because you're right. A lot of folks have got land and even houses down there that they'll never go back to live in. And the, and the, houses, yeah. are, the houses are literally going into disrepair because then they're not used. Yeah. So, um... And before I come up here, I hear... That there's more stabbing of one in England and now than New York. Then suppose I didn't hear that and I decided I now come up here. But you know, you know, folks, it's really ironic because even though what you're saying is true, over here, for some inexplicable reason, we feel safe. Folks feel safe we here. Do. We all feel safe. The people that get born up in the building. No, the, the average. Then, yes. I'm saying I know <laughs> that's the people from that storm last night don't I don't want to hear about it yes sir yeah don't they be feel safe yes they didn't feel safe before the stabbing okay. yeah it's so what is here what is here well it, the, the weirdest thing is we only react to what happens we don't proactively um, seek solutions we just react and react and react so people always feel confident before the event. It's only after the event we moan and we groan and we march. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I fly a plane regular and I don't feel safe. <laughs> I don't feel safe. Every time I feel safe, every time I go on a plane, I'm afraid. I start to figure them, say, well, if I owe the money and money at Jamaica, I hope I will come back to give them it tonight. So I don't feel safe, but I still take the plane. I still take the plane. And, and like that's, that's psychological madness. I know because we go on we, we go on underground trains every single day. Yes. And we ne we never worry about the train crashing. Never. I just come up in England. When I just come up in England, them used to have the Irish, the IRA, them a bomb up a, a bomb the, the tube. Yeah. And I still going on the tube then. That is madness. Only I know the people with Obama the place are still going there. We all did that. We all did that. I didn't look at you still going there. I can't. My brother drives me. I'm a foot in my mouth. And I say, okay, but I still drive with him. Oh, my Lord. I, I, think, I think we've developed a psychological um, mindset, mind frame. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, they are English, they are safer. They are Jamaica, you know, safer. Yeah, isn't that the weirdest thing? Yeah, it's weird. Very weird. So, Very so weird. we find white people having fun on our beaches and drinking coconut water and getting a rental dread <laughs> and uh, into reggae music <laughs> having fun. Oh, Lord so, of mercy. And we, we go there. One love, one heart. Let's get together and be all right. Everybody's having fun. And we go over there and we're paranoid. Yeah, we, we're supposed to be paranoid because we're coming from a country with we feel so we don't have to be paranoid, paranoid until something like a building blow up or burn down or a stadium with almost children in there. People just let go of bomb in there. We start to get paranoid. Yeah, I'm talking about when we go to Jamaica, we get paranoid just by going down there. Yeah, that's what I say. But you see, we don't get paranoid in a situation where a man can blow up a building with you in there or burn down a building with you in there. It's funny because what happened, people say, I was there, I, I almost got blown up. <laughs> They have yeah, they, are, are, you, are you walking on the, the, the bridge and a man drive a car and kill all 10 people on the, the bridge? You don't feel paranoid about that. Because, you know what I mean? Like, 
If your family didn't know, then you'll feel paralyzed by for water on the bridge. Yeah, it's really strange, my brother, how we've developed this. Yeah, that's human nature, you know, human nature. But it's, I, I call it dual mentality. Yeah. Where we are afraid of one thing but not the other because we associate a, a particular aspect of freedom with that yeah. aspect of, of those people, but not within our own selves. Yeah, it's like black and white, man. Most black people don't like black. <laughs> it's like that thing. You prefer have a white Christmas and whiter than snow and, you know, everything white is white and everything black is ugly. So there's a psychological imbalance. So we will never, we will never address yet in our minds our children. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, I'm, I'm well, hoping I'm hoping to get some calls. Hey? I'm hoping to get some calls so that people can speak to you directly. But um, I don't know what's happening today. It appears there's a, there's a, a lack of callers today. Yeah, let me listen. You let me listen. But you know, so I want to interview you for lawyer you now, and we, we really have to go. Okay, well, I I appreciate you taking the time yeah. to, to to you know to um, educate us and and make us feel a little bit better about ourselves today. Yeah, man, I want the people to turn out because there's more in store. Oh, I have I have no doubt it's going to be oversubscribed. <laughs> I, I have no doubt. All right. And I'm looking forward to coming down myself tomorrow. Yeah, light out. So put my name on the door. Well, I don't have nothing to do with that. You know, the people who set up this interview have to do that. Well, I, well, I spoke to Basie, and, and I think that that's not a problem. All right, okay. Well, my brother, I want to thank you from the depths of my heart. And when I come down to Jamrock, I want to come on your show. Okay. So looking forward to seeing you d tomorrow. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Muta, right. I, I have one simple principle in life. Whether you are a coward or you're brave, you're, you're going to die anyway. Yeah, so, but you don't, want, you don't want to lie when you can you can prevent it. Still. So, I, I know, but don't fear what you don't know. I'll fight for preventing it. Yeah, I believe you're not coming, my prevent it. No, well, I don't believe that. I believe wherever, when, when your time is up, your time is up. Okay, sir. So, thank you, sir. No, I just said I'm going to look through the window and see if any Arab-looking person belongs there. Don't say that. <laughs> well, I'm not sure you say it. I'm not supposed to say it. I'm not sure you. I just tried to bring across a point. I, I get you. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I just tried to bring across a point here. I get you cause, because it's, it's all foolishness. Yeah. When I used to jump, when I used to just outside Rasta, when I walk on the road, people cross the road. Fear what, because they fear what they don't know. All right, that we are talking about. So, I don't fear Arab looking people, I don't fear white looking people. Yeah, I understand, that's just that measure. That is, 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 a, is a thing I show you, you know, I, I, I get you, I get you. Yeah, give thanks. Give thanks, my brother, and um, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. All right. Peace and blessings. Brothers and sisters, that was the fabulous Muta Baruka, the stepping razor from the, the island called Jamaica down in the Caribbean. Um, if you've never heard of Muta Baruka before, you owe it to yourself to uh, get acquainted with that brother because, you know, when he talks, Jamaica listens. In fact, when he talks, the world listens. So, Get familiar with Muta Baruka. I want to thank our brother for the uh, messages that he brought to us and his f personal thoughts and his philosophical ideas. Thank you, Muta, and uh, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I want you people to go down there tomorrow. Go support Muta and Omar and um, Leo and... Uh, I, I Forgive me for the name of the other brother. Please forgive me. I'm sure someone will call and tell me his name.